Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. This is Marta's Magical Mystery Class. And this session we are talking about brainstorming. The goal of all these videos is to prepare you to draft a novel, to kind of keep you company on the journey as you're drafting that first mystery novel. Uh, and then to help you revise, edit, and then look into your options for self-publishing or pursuing an agent or a mainstream publisher with that novel. And I'm guessing this is going to take us all a while, I think a year or more. So I will be checking in with you every couple of weeks. In the alternating weeks, I can be found at the sister channel, Marta's Sci-Fi Seminar where I will be talking about similar issues with regard to science fiction. Um, now, the difference between the two channels is mainly in the examples that I'm going to give. You'll find sometimes I get more excited about one issue or the other. I script these pretty loosely. Um, but the main difference will be the mystery channel. We're going to have mystery examples. Um, the sci-fi channel, we will have sci-fi examples of things. So if you happen to enjoy both, as I do, and I write paranormal cozy mysteries, so I've got one foot in each camp, um, then you are more than welcome to subscribe to both channels. The idea is uh, that you can watch them a couple times a month, uh, or you can watch them, you can watch them as they come out, that would be ideal, but since Right now, there's only a couple of you subscribing. Um, I imagine most of you will be watching these on your own time uh, as they appear, uh, or as, as you have time to watch them. So they're scheduled there. I'm assuming you're watching them every couple of weeks, a couple of times a month. But let's get down to talking about brainstorming. Now, a lot of you may know what that term is, you may not know what that term is, but the idea behind brainstorming, which some people also call free writing, is to just put ideas on paper in the however messy those ideas happen to feel or look or sound at the time. The idea is just to get some words on paper and to start generating uh, some kind of notion of what you want to do for a given project. When we're talking about brainstorming your novel, um, some great things to do would be just over the next couple weeks. This, this is your homework. I give you homework each time. Mostly your homework up to this point has been to read, and I still highly recommend that, and I'm going to give you some recommendations at the end of my talk. Um, but when it comes to brainstorming, the homework I'm going to give you is to get in the habit of jotting things down. Now, you can keep a notebook with you, like an actual paper and pen. Uh, you can use the Notes app on your phone. That's what I do. Uh, you can devise fancier methods for yourself, uh, if you like. Um, keeping Some people keep uh, elaborate files of notes in their computers. Um, some people email themselves things. Uh, some people use apps like, uh, ooh, I am blanking on the name of the app, but there are apps out there also. Evernote, that is the name of the app, Evernote, that allows you to just gather bits and pieces of things and hold them together. Um, I have a friend who's a huge Evernote fan. So those are all options for you in terms of brainstorming. Now let me talk a little more about when you're brainstorming a novel, what that might look like. So maybe you've been thinking about a character that you want to have in your novel, and that character reminds you of somebody you know. So you might just write down, oh, you know, my librarian character is a lot like so-and-so. Hey, do I have a picture of so-and-so. Do I, maybe I want to call so-and-so and say, hey, I think I'm going to put you in my book, which is, you know, maybe we need to do a whole session on why that's problematic. Um, putting people you actually know in your books is problematic, but 
having characters who are inspired by people from your world, you soften things a little. That can be a little easier to do. <laughs> but when we're brainstorming, anything goes. So uh, while you might not actually use all the details about your aunt who is a librarian, um, you may want to include uh, a character who's somewhat like her in your book. But while you're brainstorming, maybe you just write down librarian character like Aunt Mildred, okay? Um, other brainstorming things. Oh, I want uh, to find a beach setting for this one scene in my book. So as you're brainstorming, you might just write down beaches that maybe you've been to or you've heard of or you've seen pictures of or you might even just write down find beaches as you're brainstorming. Um, one of the things I like to do when I'm brainstorming, uh, for me figuring out how the plot is going to fit together is the real challenge of a novel because a novel is big. Lots of different things have to happen. So I tend to write down things like, oh, okay, so character X has to disappear uh, by a quarter of the way through the book. And that's, that's you know, kind of how the brainstorming started for my second novel. Oh yeah, this is going to be about disappearances. So I think so-and-so needs to disappear here. Ooh, and I think this also has to happen now an item has to go missing um, maybe something has to be found so as you're brainstorming you just write down all those those are that's just a very loose way to do brainstorming um, another way to do brainstorming now we talked in the inspiration series about uh, the importance of reading books in your genre we also talked about the importance of reading books about the craft of writing particularly craft of writing in your genre. Um, uh, writing exercise books are another terrific kind of, they're a subset of craft book resources that can be another great way to get you brainstorming and thinking about your book. So I'm going to mention uh, one writer in particular, Natalie Goldberg, Writing Down the Bones. And this is Thunder and Lightning. I also really love Wild Mind. I can't find my copy of it right now. Um, one of Natalie's primary um, focuses in her books is on timed writings. Go for 10 minutes. Give yourself a prompt. Um, and the, her prompts sometimes are as simple as, as I remember. Um, when you're working on a prompt for a novel, uh, you might use a, ten, a prompt for a 10-minute free write, a 10-minute timed writing, that's something like, I want my librarian character to, and then go with it. Whatever you think you're going to have Aunt Mildred do during your novel. Um, so I highly recommend Natalie Goldberg's books. I did say on the channel I was going to... Um, make a point of highlighting books by writers of color and books by writers from uh, both the disability communities and from the LGBTQIA plus communities. Um, Natalie is out as a lesbian, so she is a queer writer. I have quoted some other queer writers here on the channel, but I don't know that I have featured books by other queer writers yet on the channel. So um, please do those of you who uh, have a particular fondness for writers from that community, note that Natalie is of the tribe. Um, and Natalie is a wonderful resource for all of us. Her focus is more on autobiographical writing, uh, but especially at this stage of the game where you're trying to figure out how to get started, you're trying to find your way into your material for the novel, I highly recommend her work. We're going to talk about some other exercise books down the line too, but for today, Natalie Goldberg. As far as mystery recommendations go, I am two books into a fantastic series I want to make sure I mention. 
This is, I think I can get my Kindle to cooperate. I did. Uh, Alexia Gordon's Murder in G Major. The second one is Death in D Minor that I've also just finished reading. Um, I had the great privilege of getting to read these as part of Angela Marie Hart's uh, Cozy Mystery Book Club. So Angela, if you're watching, yay! I love the Cozy Mystery Book Club. And I think that um, Alexia Gordon's books were a great choice. Um, Gordon is, uh, she blogs uh, for a couple of different places that I'm not remembering right now. I will put it in the notes for the channel. Um, but Gordon is a writer of color uh, and she is working, I think, she's also a physician, so a physician by day, writer by night. Um, she is working on novel six, but I suspect novel six has, like many other things, been disrupted by the pandemic. So uh, novel five came out in March of 2020. Um, those of us who love her work are hoping book six will appear maybe here in 2021, if that's possible, given the demands on a physician during a pandemic. Um, the other book recommendation I have is not a recommendation yet. It, I, everything I'm reading about this book makes me want to read it. So it's, it's a pre-order. It's a book anticipation, not a book recommendation. Um, and that is Arsenic and Adobo by Mia P. Menansala. Um, who is a queer Latina writer, and the book sounds like an absolute riot. It is also a cozy mystery. So, um, with those brainstorming tips and those book recommendations to keep you reading, keep you inspired, I will let you go for this week. But I'll see you two weeks out, and I hope that in the interim you get a chance to brainstorm some ideas for your novels. Maybe look up some of Natalie Goldberg's books and try some of her free write prompts. See you next time.